The Mamiya C220, a beautiful classic camera. Today we're going to be exploring the macro capabilities of this camera. Because of its unique bellows focus, this camera can focus closer than most any other twin lens reflex camera. We'll be taking the Mamiya C220 to the Pine River Nature Center and hunt for some interesting subjects for macro photography. Maybe, just maybe, there'll be mushrooms this time. It is early autumn in Michigan, and that means we're at the beginning of the stunning autumnal colors that we have in fall here in Michigan. But also it means we have the opportunities to do some macro photography work. And one of my favorite subjects to do of macro work is mushrooms. And we are again at the Pine River Nature Center hoping to find some mushrooms to photograph. And not only are we gonna be doing some macro work of mushrooms, we're going to be using the Mamiya C330 with black and white film. I've got Foma Pan 200 in this, and we're going to be doing some very interesting macro shots with this Mamiya camera. Let's get going. I have already found my first potential subjects for these mushroom photographs and right here along in the path, and we're just a couple feet in, is this little grouping of mushrooms. So we're gonna get the Mamiya C330 set up. We're gonna take some light meter readings and see what we need to do. See if we can be handheld for this or if we need a tripod. Using the app on my phone, I did a light meter reading of these mushrooms and at ISO 200, it looks like the mosquitoes are, are furious out here today. And it looks like I'm between F2.8 and F4 at 125th of a second. So I'm pretty certain I can handhold that. So that allows us to get right on the ground and kind of do a, a upward view a little bit of these mushrooms. I think that'll be a little more intriguing, make them look a little larger than they really are. The Mamiya C220 and C330 were unique twin lens reflex cameras in that they had this bellows focusing mechanism. Anytime you use a bellows or extension tubes or anything to bring the lens out from the camera, you're reducing the amount of light hitting that film. And if you remember, I said it was about 125th of a second between f2.8 and f4. If I use the 2.8 aperture and I've got to go two stops, it goes from 125th of a second to a 60th to a 30th of a second. And um, that is right on the edge of what I can hand hold. With any type of film photography, it's okay if you overexpose the film a little bit. That's the analog way of lifting the shadows that we do in the digital retouch world. Film, in essence, is a raw file, and if we overexpose the film, we're lifting this up, as long as we're careful not to block up the highlights. But there's a ton of headroom in film, so we don't block up the highlights. It's kind of backwards of digital photography. In digital photography, we've got to be careful to not block the highlights and we can recover the shadows. In film photography, in negative photography, we need to make sure that there's shadow detail and we can generally recover the highlights. So let's get to doing these photographs. So let's get down here and we will try to get some photographs of these guys. And there is our first exposure. Let's move on and see if we can find some more. This truly is a magnificent place to do photographs. We've got a creek right here that is just beautiful to see. We've got the mushrooms, we've got woods. It's um, just wonderful. This is a county park in St. Clair County, Michigan, and uh, is just a, a beautiful place to stroll, to relax, and to enjoy nature. What an absolutely beautiful autumn day this has turned out to be. Today started out kind of foggy. They were saying there might be a little bit of rain in the forecast today, this afternoon. So I wanted to get out. It's about noon today, which is really 
terrible, terrible conditions to do any kind of landscape photography. But I figured we could do some macro work in light like this. But this is such, such a rich place for images and it's so close. It's so close. And I know, you know, we, we all tend to watch these landscape photographers that live in incredible vistas with the mountains, but a lot of us live in more flatlands and it's difficult to find things. That's, I think, why I've always gravitated in woodland type photography to more macro style photography. It's a portion of the world that we don't always get to see that close up. You can isolate something and have it just stand away from the background and look so special and so beautiful. Woodland photography is often very, very difficult with all of the branches and leaves and shadows and, and highlights and the speculars that are happening and everything. It's such a difficult, difficult thing to photograph as woodlands. What a, probably the most difficult genre of photography that I can think of. just came across these mushrooms sitting right here. I may try some natural light, but I did bring a couple artificial lights with me as well to maybe do some two-point lighting on these. Because of the extension of the bellows, I'm shooting at f4 at a 60th of a second. So I set the Lewinner light up to shine a little bit more light on these mushrooms. Mistakes you make. Because this is a twin lens reflex camera, you look through the top lens, but you're exposing the image through that bottom lens. And that means what you're seeing in the two lenses isn't quite the same. Normal distances for portraiture, for weddings, what this camera is designed for, that doesn't really make any difference. It's close enough that there's no difference. But when you're up close like this, the difference of where you're gonna see it is pretty critical. There's lines in the screen, in this camera, in the focusing screen, that tell you where the top of the image is gonna be, depending on how close you're focused. I was doing it backwards in those earlier mushroom photographs, so I probably don't even have anything in those photos. This one, I made sure to do it the right way. This is actually quite a pretty subject. I'm pretty happy with this. I'm almost wishing I had some color film because this is that Lewinner little portable RGB light. And with this guy, I can do different colors and I could light up that mushroom with kind of a real fanciful color. I've got a blue here. There's different colors we can do. Very, very handy little device. We've shot all 12 exposures of that Fomapan 200 film, so I think it's time to head back home to the studio, get that film in the developing tank, and see what we've come up with. I processed that Fomapan 200 in HC110 developer, actually FPP110 from the Film Preservation Project. It has the same formulation as Kodak's HC110 developer and works in times the same. Consulting the massive film development chart, that gave me my development time and fixing time for this film. I used the Develop app on my phone for each step of processing. For more film photography tips, techniques, and developing film, check this list right here. For more information on the Mamiya C220, I've got a great video right here that's a complete walkthrough of that amazing camera.